Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures review of this insane Genesis G90. You guys already know, love big sedans, which is why I take the big sedans. Normally, I only do trucks and SUVs. Sorry for the cars driving by. Uh, anyway, normally I only do trucks and SUVs, but and crossovers, all that kind of stuff. But I do love big sedans. These LED lights are actually quite interesting, and I like them on there. Um, massive wheels and tires, of course. These are 21s, I want to say. Yeah, 245, 40. R21 so I do like the look of the wheels too they just this car is reminiscent look at the the uh, ABC pillar reminiscent of a Maybach design but anyway I really like the design of this car I hadn't even really looked at the front of it till I just started the filming but check out those that's the headlights the headlights are on right now so the headlights are just a crazy I don't know 15 20 about 20 LEDs per side for the headlights. And this thing actually looks a little bit menacing from the front. It is, this one's all wheel drive with the E supercharged twin turbo V6. There's your all wheel drive sign. And just kind of a nuts car overall as far as all the interior and stuff goes. But let's go ahead and take a look under the hood first and we'll take a look around the inside. Sorry for the lighting. It was actually much cloudier earlier. I just happened to make it out to film when it was blue skies where the sun is. So anyway, here you go. 3.5 liter turbo, gas direct injection and electric supercharger. And Honestly, I can't see much of any of that underneath all the plastic everywhere. So, apparently, Quaker State Shell Ultra I have jumped on with Genesis. But uh, anyway, this little engine, 3.5 liters, puts out 409 horsepower, 405 foot pounds of torque, and it is chambered, chambered, it is connected to a, an eight speed automatic transmission, just a standard eight speed. So no fancy twin clutch system or anything. And it shifts super smooth. Like you hardly even notice it. Honestly, I don't notice it. So that's the one thing with this car. It isolates you like crazy. So many things that you don't really notice. Sorry, we got a uh, dump truck coming in here. And okay, now that he's gone, anyway, um, <laughs> I think it's hard to show on video how massive this thing is. So that's got to be like six and a half, seven feet wide. It just is a big, wide vehicle, and it looks so menacing from the front. Plus, Genesis sent this to me with this matte black paint. Let me see if I can find the exact color for you. Makula, Makau, Makau, Makalu, Makalu, gray. Anyway, it's a matte paint, and that just makes it look even more insane. So if you haven't noticed already, door handles pop out. So when I lock it, they will retract in. And there we go. If you haven't seen a Genesis key fob before, or uh, some of the Hyundais, of course, are this way, a Kia. The buttons are on the sides, and it does have the park thing here so I'll go ahead and lock it hold down the remote start there we go fired up and it has the forward button right here right there in the middle one I'm gonna push that from the rear you can actually see the lights change as it goes you know past reverse into drive but there you go so just holding down the key fob to pull this thing out. It's in a super tight parking stall, if you can imagine. Can't open the doors or anything. So you do that to get into it. And that's as far as it will go. 
So that's far enough that you could, should be able to get in the front door. Now let's go ahead, throw it into reverse, and there it goes. So just holding down the reverse button here. Let go. Go a little further. Okay, that's where I want it. And then you can turn the car off, just hold the remote start button and it shuts off. So anyway, I mean, Hyundais and stuff have that design feature too. So there's, there are other vehicles out there with it. It's cool, but not something I really use. It does have dual panoramic sunroofs. They are super dark and we'll look at all that stuff from the inside but it's kind of crazy even with the sunroof open it doesn't add that much light you can program it so that when you walk up to the back the trunk opens automatically it's not programmed that way but it has this little button here and it would appear this paint collects dust super easy so just pulling into the parking lot here there's like a little film of dust on there anyway huge trunk and on this thing i mean easily i could climb in there it's got a pass through if you have skis or something and apparently you have to unclick clip this cargo cover here which i do like especially with a trunk that deep if you're short it's going to be hard to reach all the way back in there so you can use these cargo nets to keep having to do that and yeah so spare tire stuff under here not spare tire tire repair i should say and then that is the lithium ion battery for the supercharger. So I am not sure what that one is. Anyway, you've got the air pump and the tire sealant there underneath. No actual spare, but somewhat of a repair system. All right, let's get into the inside. Again, door handles pop out and open the door. And you can already see how much stuff there is on the seat to adjust. That's the headrest back bottom. This is the leg rest there. You can adjust the lumbar here and I think, yes, the side bolsters as well. So yeah, the headrests, everything. I love that. You can adjust everything I needed. Everything's perforated, heated and ventilated seats, of course. And then as you step in, that door will close automatically. And in case your passengers didn't close their doors, you've got these buttons here that will close the rear passenger doors. And you also have a passenger control button right there for this front passenger seat. Um, yeah, this thing has too many features for me to go over. So I'll talk about some of my favorite ones or some of the ones that stand out a little bit. Um, of course, this button here, Kind of hard to pick it up, but that is the massaging seat. And you can go in and adjust everything how you want it in the, in the screens, of course. And uh, wireless charging right here, which I really like that spot. Heated and ventilated seat, so there's the ventilation heat. And it's actually pretty darn cold. I do like that a lot. Drive modes, you just have three, Eco Sport and Comfort. And I guess you can hold it down to go to smart mode. And when you're in smart mode, you can, there we go. Uh, is it this one? Anyway, in smart mode, it will, on this great screen, it'll bring up some additional information. It's got like downhill, curvy roads. Anyway, all sorts of stuff there um, that you can get into. And one thing that's I haven't figured out yet, which I really would think you could change is this, this gauge. And it actually, when you go into the settings on here, um, anyway, cluster. So it shows, it's taking the camera a second, but anyway, it shows that kind of tachometer or speedometer there. And then I have like the digital one here anyway. So I'd love to have the kind of analog look on there. I much prefer the analog. There's that sunroof. So that's looking right at the sun and you can see it's not washing out the camera at all. So that's how dark the sunroof is on this thing. It's very, very dark. Um, I'm going to sit in the back in a minute and we'll see if that really makes much of a difference back there. 
The other thing I really like, so you have your climate screen here and you can adjust the fan speed for both uh, front seats separately. You have a fragrance, how strong you want the fragrance, and I haven't been able to smell it, which is ideal, I don't wanna smell it. Um, anyway, and so you have the touch screen up here, but you can also control that with this dial, these buttons here. Tune, I like the radio layout, everything's worked really good. Transmission, you just turn it to the right for drive, turn it to the left for park, and I'm not sure on neutral, let me see if I can get neutral. So that's drive, there's neutral. So you can kind of turn it halfway and then if you turn all the way, it'll click. So when I'm in park, it doesn't go to neutral though. Uh, also, uh, we'll just look at that from the back. There's so many things to do from the in the back of this car. Two USBs up here, 12 volt, and I, that one's just a light. Oh, whatever that is comes out. Oh, pass through into the phone area, interesting. So you can run, if you don't wanna use or don't have wireless capability, you can just plug in the USB and run a cord to the bottom of your phone there. And I was surprised, no rear view camera mirror. So that one did kind of catch me. I thought it would have that. Um, anyway, let's take a look in the back seat. All right, this is the nicer of the two back seats. So this one actually has a footrest that will come up. Um, you can push the passenger seat forward and do all that. My door is open. Man, that's a long reach. So I'll just hit that button there to close the door. So back here, again, all the same buttons here. Two memory settings. You have a rest button. You have a return you know, to normal button and then massaging seats as well. So I'm gonna hit the rest button. Oh, I have to hold it down. And you can see as the, the seat moves forward and out of the way. I wonder if I'm in this guy's way. Should be all right. So there you go, that seat's moving all the way forward, down out of the way. It's taken a little while. And now my footrest is coming up here. And there we go. So trying not to touch anyway. And you can adjust the seat here. It has all the same adjustments as the front. So headrest, back, the uh, bottom of the seat, and then the uh, leg rest there. And then of course you can move the passenger seat as needed as well. So it's quite supportive there. And of course the massage, you can control the radio, everything from here as well. Another wireless charging pad, two more USBs, and I don't know what that, UVC? Interesting. I don't know what UVC is. I will look that up and maybe put a note on the screen. UVC right there. Press the operation button to turn off the UVC sterilizer feature when you're not using the device. UV rays are released, released in the storage box. So that's a UV light sterilization feature and I imagine it's these ones down here. And anyway, so whatever you put in the box, I guess, guess gets UV sterilized. Okay, a uh, few other things. Windows here, and you can do both sides. So I'm gonna control that one. You can see the window shades move out of the way. I can roll the window down if I want. Roll it back up and roll the window shade up. And so on this side, I'll show you that same thing. You can see it has this cover that kind of pops down and covers it quite nice. And on this side, this little tab catches there. I'm not sure how to open the sunroof from here. I imagine it's in this screen. Oh, there you go. So it's already open. Oh, that's the rear window one. Um, anyway, you can open and close all the shades from here. Close that one or open that one. It, yeah, sorry, I'm getting way into all this stuff. There are too many features here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the return button. Oh, I have to hold it, I forgot about that. 
And there might be settings you can adjust. I know there are so many settings in this thing. For example, you can set it so when you walk up to the back of the vehicle, the trunk automatically opens. Um, anyway, a lot of different things, lighting and um, seat functions. There's three memory seats up front and you can adjust all that stuff. So you might be able to set this to be a one push button. Um, I do like having the air vents here and here, of course heated and ventilated seats and basically a pillow for a headrest up here very nice if you need to pass through there you go um, just insane amounts of comfort in this thing if you need an extra passenger that's extremely uncomfortable but it can fit someone there especially a little person a child or small uh, family member whatever can fit in here um, but because of that ridge on there if you're wider than that seat it's not comfortable down here a couple more usb ports and the cup holders are right there so only two cup holders back here and then you push this button to open the door but if you're stuck you can pull that lever there now the first one unlocked it interesting i'm gonna try that again because that opened all the way on its own See if this one opens. No, they're just closed. So when I pulled that one twice, oh, you just have to give it a little push, then it goes to the next stop. Anyway, kind of weird. It's electronic, but you do have to push on it or whatever. It's kind of a weird system. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the Monroney. All right. This is the 2023 G90 3.5 liter turbocharged E supercharger, all wheel drive. And it has no features except for that awesome uh, matte gray paint for 1500 bucks. And it's 101,295 out the door. That includes the shipping and handling, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've been getting about that for the fuel mileage, maybe a slightly better. And that's again, the Mercedes is lighter weight and gets a little better fuel mileage. And the Mercedes was 500 something horsepower. So more power and better fuel mileage in the Mercedes. It's definitely maybe a little bit more developed. The S class has been on the market forever. The G90, not so much. Anyway, love this thing. Uh, I, I do like the heavier feel of it uh, either way. So. Uh, we can go over all this stuff, but basically, if there's a feature, this has it. So, heated, ventilated front, rear seats, three-zone climate control, heated steering wheel, it's power, tilt, whatever, head-up display, uh, no night vision cameras that I know of or anything like that, but Bang & Olufsen 3D premium audio, the audio sounds great. Uh, yeah, anyway, tons and tons and tons of features on this thing, and of course, you're paying for it, but if you have the money it's probably worth it you're 20 30 grand less for this than the s class and it has some benefits over the s class so depending on what you're looking for this might be a better setup it is a little more simple to use except i'm not used to genesis yet so this is my first genesis vehicle that i tested i've been in many mercedes i know how their infotainment and all that stuff works the genesis has been a little bit of a learning curve for me but i still love the layout of it this G90 is so nice and quiet and smooth. I really enjoy it. You guys probably already know that I love these full-size sedans. Mercedes S-Class, the G90. I had a Crown Victoria in high school, actually. So that might be where all this is stemming from. But really do enjoy these vehicles quite a lot. They're a lot of fun to drive surprisingly so they're so big but with the rear steer on this thing it just is quite nimble actually especially for how big it is and so smooth so quiet a lot of power this 3.5 liter twin turbo supercharged maybe not twin turbo i think it's twin turbos but anyway and uh, with the electronic supercharger this thing Plenty of power from low RPM all the way up through high RPM. It's 400 horsepower-ish, 409 or something like that, and 405 torque in that range, and really does perform just amazingly. Um, I'm gonna let some cars get some room here. See if we can do a zero to 60. And anyway, it does have the automatic stop-start. 
So it's off now. Cameras on the mirrors for the blinkers. It's got surround view cameras, all that kind of stuff. So when you're driving on the freeway, you flip the blinker on, you can see your blind spot. You can see it anyway. But all right, let's go ahead. Let's do that zero to 60. And three, two, one, go. Pretty quick from when I put the foot down to when it went. 60. So we went up to 70. And the bumps on this road, there's some pretty large bumps in the asphalt, which <clears throat> this thing handles quite well. The wheels and tire, you know, really large wheels. I want to say 20s. But they might even be bigger than that um, and small sidewall tires definitely make those bumps a little bit more harsh but overall I mean those are large bumps and this thing just handles it no problem so that was 5.8 seconds and make sure I screenshot that sorry 5.58 seconds so not bad at all that was whew, I mean, it's a big sedan, under six, seven, six seconds is definitely adequate. Um, it's not gonna be Mercedes S-Class fast. It also doesn't feel as light as a Mercedes S-Class. And to me personally, I prefer having this extra weight on there. It makes it feel a little more isolated, a little more just separated from the world and for me you're buying this monster of a sedan that's what i want so the mercedes s-class definitely felt a little bit more nimble i mean i'm not pushing these cars like crazy but it felt a little more nimble and definitely felt lighter than this but like i said i don't mind the heavier feel on this thing so Anyway, um, this is that same road we were on. It's pretty rough, but man, this thing's so quiet. Let me turn off the air. So now the air conditioning's off, all that's off. That way all you're hearing is road noise, so at 45 miles an hour. And there was a stretch of road with brand new asphalt on it, and it was just silent. Like I didn't hear any sound at all. My guess this thing has the acoustic, uh, anyway, audio speaker system that plays, that counteracts road noise. So your speakers will play a, a wave that's the inverse of road noise waves and it cancels out the sound essentially. So sound canceling, I guess I should just say that. No, just like your sound canceling headphones or whatever, but. <laughs> Just tried to slide a little bit but anyway so quiet so even accelerating i felt the shift there you, you definitely the harder you're on the throttle the more you feel the shifts but most of the time you don't even hardly notice when it shifts so, and it I mean, just goes i'm not accelerating super fast but at 15 1800 rpm i would say about 1800 rpm on it's just goes got plenty of torque i imagine it's a very very flat torque curve so down low you get the supercharger electric supercharger kicking in and giving you the power down low and then as the turbos take over that supercharger backs off lets the turbos kick in and it just keeps the power very very flat so and it shows i mean the way this thing drives it adds to the effortless feel of it. I would say it's not quite Mercedes S-Class, but it definitely feels effortless to get up to speed. You're never more than half throttled. You know, merging onto the freeway, you don't have to hardly even give it any throttle to go. So very, very cool. I just realized my seat cooler is on, so there was even noise from that, but so little road noise in this thing. Love it. Hopefully you can see the head-up display. It shows the vehicles in front of you. It actually shows when they're changing lanes, both in and out. Um, and this is hands-free, so I don't have my hands on the steering wheel. It's kind of doing everything on its own. And also, you can see a lot better here, but basically the same screen is up on the head-up display as well. So really not a bad system. It's, it's 
slightly jerky, but smoother than many I've tested, and overall just really pretty good. So. And I've disabled it now, so that's why it's not showing up. But turn it back on there. You can set that distance too between the car and in front of you and and then it shows that little white bar you saw moving around. Anyway, not bad system, not bad at all. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures review of this wonderful Genesis G90 uh, 3.5 liter T E supercharged all wheel drive. I think it's the full name, kind of a long name, but anyway, really quite an excellent vehicle i can't reiterate enough how much i love full-size sedans especially luxury level ones they're just a joy because they isolate you from the world and if you get migraines or you're just sick of people getting this thing throw on the massage if you really need that has these sounds things and whatever a lot of vehicles have that with it can put you in a certain mood whatever put that on and just drown out the rest of the world anyway love these cars and really it's not bad to drive at all i enjoy driving them it has all sorts of features to keep you comfortable the seat will adjust a little bit every now and then to make sure you're not just sitting on the same spot it moves around putting pressure in different spots just lots and lots of features uh, it's a genesis newish brand and don't know long term how all this stuff's going to hold up but really i'm comparing genesis to the lexus of the 90s so when lexus came out with the ls 400 i believe it was and eh, like 92 93 something like that um where they're just making a very very nice high-end luxury sedan to compete with the kings of the market yeah uh, this is what genesis has done with this vehicle so it's it's a little bit lower price point, not quite as dialed in as some of the others, but totally worth the amount of money you pay for it as the others are gonna be more expensive in general. Anyway, long outro. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell when you get, so you get notifications when we post new videos. Give me a thumbs up, comment down below. And if you didn't like it, be sure to give me a thumbs down, but comment down below and let me know why. I wanna know what you wanna see different, what you wanna see better. Uh, anyway, if you like these uh, sedans and stuff like that, I, I can pick up a few more of them. Like I said, I generally only do crossovers, SUVs, pickup trucks, and then I love these full-size sedans, so I, I do review those as well. I'm not as much of a sports car guy. I do enjoy driving them, but I'm not an expert in that area. So anyway, thanks again. Have a great day.